Investment 360. In the hot seat today is Kulakani Dlamini, head of research at Afina Capital. And of course, Kevin Lings from Stanlib is still here with me. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Kulakani. Much appreciated for your time. Uh, you've got exotic stocks for us today, small and mid-cap stocks. Let's start off with Mustek, uh, a company which has uh, uh, got a market cap of 489 million rand. It's quite small at this stage. Uh, we know that it has been under the spotlight uh, for perhaps not uh, uh, being one of the favorites during the crisis. Tell us why this is one of your stock picks right now. Um, I think within that total area in terms of the small cap ITs, you've got some interesting gems, companies that are trading on you know, historic multiples of five and a half, six times, that are very cash generative, that are just ticking away quietly, um, and, and where you have good earnings growth on very, very low PEs. It doesn't really have a revenue um, growth scenario, in fact, since 2005. Give us a sense of what we're looking at right now for Mastec. Well, what you actually have seen is that they've um, teamed up with Acer and Lenovo, so they're actually going to be distributing those products. And those are actually quite credible products. You know, if you think of Lenovo, that used to be the old ThinkPad. Mm. So, you know, in terms of what they make themselves um, and then what they distribute on a third party basis, this company actually is becoming a, a relatively well diversified business. Guys that are more sensitive or, uh, to costs will buy the things that Acer, or the, sorry, that Mustek ma makes, the Macer brand. Guys that are slightly more sophisticated corporates that are keen on getting a tried and tested product will buy. The, 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 the Lenovo product. So they, they now have a very good uh, sort of product set that should actually see them grow really well going forward and on margins currently that are significantly below normal. Kulakani, if we have a look at um, South Africa's IT sector, um, where would you say the IT spend is at the moment? In other words, where's our IT cycle? Are businesses um, short of updates, in other words, are they going to have to look to expand their, their IT spend in terms of new technologies? Um, have, many, have many businesses already upgraded? Where exactly are we in the IT cycle? It's a very interesting uh, question that you're asking there, Kevin, because what typically happens is the software upgrade cycle is what leads the hardware upgrade cycle. Now, we're actually at a very interesting sweet spot because you are seeing this new, I think it's Windows um, 7, actually, I always get the names wrong, but the, the latest, uh, zootiest um, you know, operating system from Microsoft. That operating system demands a lot more sort of engine power from your hardware, which old hardware doesn't have. Now, from 2005, 6 onwards, people have actually been sort of holding on to their hardware and not upgrading. Now, you actually have new kit, you know, that can accommodate these, these new operating systems and new software. At the same time, you have these zooty and fancy things like iPads and iPhones and Blackberries that also want to interface with, you know, your enterprise system in the office. So you actually are at a point where there is a two-pronged CAPEX spend coming through on hardware as well as on software. Yeah. So it's, it's a sweet spot for South African companies currently. Okay. Well, let's touch on data tech. Um, we're looking at margins of around 14%. P is quite high, in fact, closer to 20. Distribution, 74% of revenue, but 56% of gross profit. Do you see that as a negative because it is uh, sort of leaning towards one side, one division, division uh, making a big impact on the overall business? Absolutely. Um, yes, data tech is actually a bit of a, a concentrated business, but if you actually go back in time, Westcon used to be the business. Now you have Logicalis and the consulting business that are actually making up about 30% of revenue and slightly more on the, the, the EBIT line because they are slightly better margin businesses. So, you know, at the EBIT level, data tech is actually really well diversified. And the margin, once again, is significantly lower than what it's been in the past, not in the heady days of 2001, mm -hmm. but in terms of just the most recent history. You know, their margins are around 4% on a blended basis. They should be somewhere between 5 to 6% in terms of, you know, what their peers are trading at and what their, their own targets are looking like. Kulakani, if you look at um, the spend, the IT spend from within the public sector, government specifically, um, it certainly has gone up and it seems to be maintaining a fairly high level and I assume there are a few IT companies locally that are benefiting from that. If you sure. take that view and you add it together with the previous comments you made about 
where we are in the IT cycle. Which company, let's say one company that you think can benefit from that combination? In other words, a combination of still supplying uh, various government contracts, but at the same time benefiting from some private sector upgrades of software and hardware? Data centrics. Very, very easily, <laughs> data centrics. Data centrics, they basically provide some of the key hardware and they make really healthy margins. Yeah. Well, 9.5% um, you know, margins, margins at this stage, Kulapani. Uh, yeah, Sorry? margins sitting at 9.5%, they're pretty steady, in fact. Yeah, so, so. Yeah, so they make margins between eight to ten percent, you know, on an ongoing basis. So, you know, that's a business that's very, very well plugged in into the government sector. Now, sadly enough, at this point, they're only twenty percent, um, you know, public. The revenue is twenty percent public spend, and it used to be anywhere over half of what their revenue levels were. Um, and they're addressing that with their, their BE that they're redoing uh, in the short term, which, which should actually see them going forward once again, benefit from being the de facto uh, provider of hardware to government. Okay, so Kulakani, in other words, data centric, data tech and must tech, uh, very much entrenched in your portfolio, I would assume then. They're, they're quite small. That's a terrible thing about them. Um, but, you know, in these times when everybody is kind of looking the other way, looking at yeah. the resources, the, the, the things that in the benchmarks are quite substantial, these are the stocks that you get at really good prices um, with, with margins at really low levels, with PEs that you're paying for the earnings at these yeah. low margins at also really low levels. I mean, if you look at an EOH, an EOH is an 11 bagger. It's a business that actually went from, you know, yeah. on, from, from, from a, a, um, an earnings point of view. It used to generate 12 cents in earnings 11 years ago. It's generating about two rand yeah. today. And it's just been doing it quietly and ticking away. So you want businesses yeah. like that, that you know, can just continue quietly ticking away. They generate really good cash. And in hard times, they, they sort of have s marginal dips in margin, but they continue yeah. at the same pace. So. In my, you know, for my money, I really like the idea that I can get, you know, good steady growers that will probably, you know, do somewhere between 15 to 25 percent um, over the next sort of five, six years. And I'm buying them today on five PEs and reasonable dividend yields. And a big smile coming through from Kulakani. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Okay. Much appreciated. <laughs>